Hey, y'all. Welcome to the Food Raiders Report. I am so excited over the next few minutes to share with you what we've been doing in our food waste program. Not only uh, uh, with what Corey has been doing on the farm, but what we've been doing programmatically with Grow Appalachia, Dumplings and Dancing, Forks of Troublesome Foods, uh, what the farmer's market's doing and how we're looking to be bigger and better uh, even in 2020. Uh, and and some cool new things coming down the pike that I'm really excited to share with you guys. Uh, but before we get started, I just want to take this time to thank each and every one of you all. Uh, sitting on a board sometimes uh, is uh, uh, is not an easy job, and, and we've seen that over the last uh, over the last six months. Uh, but you've sat there and you've sat tirelessly uh, striving to continue to make a difference. You know, Maystone and Catherine Pettit uh, trudged into the mountains to really uh, make an impact and, and social change. Uh, and we're still doing that same work today. And it's because of you, uh, because of a board that, that looks out for the, the, for the settlement school, for the staff, uh, and to make sure that we're continuing to change lives uh, for the next 100 years. This latest edition of Dumplings and Dancing uh, was one for the record books. We had the largest paying crowd that we had. We had folks from Canada and seven other states. And this year we really focused on cornbread. Uh, we gathered around and talked about cornbread recipes. We had a, uh, a meal there grinding corn that we turned into cornbread later that night. We changed our pricing structure and it really worked to encourage folks to come and, and spend the day with us. We had a student design poster, a uh, poster contest with the local high schools. This was the winner that was chosen, uh, and uh, uh, they were recognized at Dumplings and Dancing this year. Uh, and we're really pleased with the growth and the, the, the enthusiasm that we had with it. So we're really excited for the 2020 version, November 6th through the 7th. We're hoping for a kind of a sorghum um, uh, push this year. Uh, so if anybody would, has any ideas or would like to get involved, please let me know. We'd love to have your help. Forks of Troublesome Food is our food brand. Anything that we produce and sell off the farm, whether it be raw product or value-added goods, falls under the, the, the name Forks of Troublesome Food. Kind of our biggest project with it is our Christmas boxes. This year we sold 138 boxes, that's up 40 from last year, and shipped them nationwide. It was an extremely um, kind of mind-blowing experience uh, for the support that we had. Uh, this year, for the first time, we offered a $100 box, not thinking we'd sell a lot of them, and that truly was our most popular option. Also, with Forks of Troublesome Food, we have sold chickens, and sold chickens galore, and um, and, and one of the neat ways we've done that is at the Perry County pop-up market. Uh, they have a pop-up market once a month uh, where we will take pre-orders, drive them to Hazard, drop them off. Um, we did that th three or four times uh, over the uh, the late fall and winter uh, and was able to put about a thousand bucks back in back into the settlement school. So we're really excited about that. And then our CSA is starting up. This is in our third season of CSAs. Uh, we're hoping to sell 30. Uh, and then give 10 away to the housing authority. Uh, and then we have a contract already to sell 20 shares to the Fresh Stop and Hazard every other week. Well, we're come to maybe my favorite part. And that's our Grow Appalachia and Agrilachia programs. Where we're truly making a difference in the lives of families and not in surrounding counties. This year, we've enrolled 63 families. And we're planning to enroll 12 to 15 more uh, as, uh, as funding allows. Uh, and we're excited to be able to do that, especially in this challenging time. You know, back in, back in January, I was able to, to go to the, the Grow App All Hands Gathering. And, and uh, somebody mentioned that, you know, this was truly community development. Um, and I knew it's something that I really loved and I was really passionate about it. But I never really thought of it in, in, in terms of community development, but it truly is. And, and, and we, have, we have grew such an amazing community um, that share uh, and that respect each other. It's just absolutely fantastic. Over the last 60 days, we've seen a lot of change in our Grow App program. Uh, we can't necessarily meet. We've had to go to have meetings on Facebook, uh, check-ins on Facebook, uh, and uh, drive-through um, pass-outs. Uh, of, of resources. 
We've been doing digital check-ins, uh, and uh, it's actually really kind of brought us closest, closer together. We're talking more. We're communicating more through phone. I'm getting phone calls from folks, sometimes just to chat. That's what I like to have. Um, our Agri Latcher program, we're getting ready to roll out more of a scholarly um uh, more of a scholarly uh, lecture series in the, in the fall, so be sure to look for that. Um, but we're certainly proud of our Grow Appalachia and Agrilatcha program. <music> Knott County Farmers Market has uh, been taking uh, quite a bit of time uh, out of my schedule this spring. Um, you know, we a year or so ago we had Allie Hintz as our Vista and our market manager, and you know we really couldn't find anybody to fill our shoes. Uh, we searched last fall uh, for a market manager and really couldn't find uh, a Vista that really kind of struck our fancy. Um, so as of right now, that all falls on me. So uh, we're, we're preparing for our 2020 market season. Starts June the 2nd. Uh, we're really excited to be able to, uh, to, to announce that uh, we have 10 vendors. Um, we've never had that, but we have 10 vendors, 10 folks that have already filled that paperwork uh, that set through trainings uh, and that is that are ready to accept WIC and SNAP and senior vouchers. Uh, so we're going to be able to make sure that there's food and local food available to the whole community. Um, another really exciting fact is with this pandemic, uh, it's looking that the Friday morning market that happens at the extension office may not happen uh, until July, if it happens at all. So uh, at this point in time, the market committee is looking at having the market both days uh, there at the shelter there um, on campus. And they're already kind of considering that might be a permanent fixture and that may become the permanent farmer's market uh, pavilion. So uh, pretty excited about the growth there and, and really excited to get started uh, with the 2020 market season. I'm sure some of you may have already heard our kind of exciting news, but um, about a year ago, App Harvest, the big massive greenhouse um, uh, company that set up in Moorhead, um, made a made a visit to campus, and and we really connected. Uh, I started talking about ideas and thoughts and uh, of this farmer training program uh, that's been in my head really before I got to the settlement school, but certainly. Once I, once I kind of became solidified in my position uh, and saw the resources and, and, and what we had, it made the perfect sense that this is where we could really make a lot of difference in, in our local food system. Um, so um, Amy with App Harvest and I sat and talked about this and um, got really excited move forward, we bring in farm credit and we have a conversation conversation with farm credit and they get really excited about it as well. And, and um, it all ends up, we got a power proposal uh, that um, um, actually App Harvest paid a firm to write for us. So we didn't have to put forth other than a lot of kind of legwork on the back end, but they crafted a wonderful, wonderful um, application for us that's in. Uh, for the Appalachian Farmers Institute. Um, and it's in partnership with Hazard Community and Technical College, uh, offering a work certificate program, Knott County Drug Court, working maybe trying to get some uh, um, some recovery folks coming in through kind of an ag pipeline that then we turn them into, um, we make them employable individuals, whether they go and work for App Harvest, they go work for themselves, um, they work at a lawn and garden center, uh, but they should be able to pick up wonderful life skills uh, and soft skills and work ready skills uh, through a really awesome program that we've designed. It's about a year program uh, from start to finish from when they come in uh, to when, when they graduate out. Uh, and we're looking at about 48 of those over the next three years. So uh, keep your fingers crossed uh, that when uh, those power grants are, um, um, uh, when they are announced, I guess in September, that maybe uh, we'll hear Hyman Settlement School. Know I'm probably being a tad long-winded in this video, and and uh, um, I apologize for that. But I do have some final thoughts of, of some things that have happened. Uh, it's certainly been an eventful um, um, little bit for the settlement school, but you know, our office for quite some time was in Uncle Saw's cabin. 
I'll be the first to say when um, the new offices were being divvied out and, and uh, all of a sudden I walked in and, and I didn't have a name on the door, I was pretty crushed, pretty aggravated. I didn't necessarily want to be in a nasty old cabin um, where you could see through the walls. But set in that cabin, it, it really helped me connect with, with the settlement school and the work even more. Uh, to think about what great accomplishments have happened right there on the banks of Troublesome is quite inspiring. And, and, to, and to see that we're still doing that today. You know, amidst all of, all of our heartache and, and our trouble and trials and tribulations that we've had this spring, there was a, a week that I really want to just touch on that I think really kind of hits the nail on the head of what we should be doing at the settlement school. It was one of those crazy weeks where there was stuff every day, every night. It was it was bonkers. Um, I wasn't going to home till late. Uh, and luckily, um, the settlement school was family friendly and our families could, could come. But it started with a big read. Uh, Ola had this wonderful literary program with families reading together. Um, they had 15 or 20 families out reading. Uh, that was just absolutely spectacular. We had a 60 plus crowd for Grow Appalachia the next night. Uh, and then on Thursday night, we had a bluegrass concert. Those days may have been mixed up. It may have been a Thursday, Monday, and Tuesday. I'm not sure. Um, but it was a short time period where we were doing lots of things that the community were coming to us for an entertainment outlet, for a way to educate themselves, and for a way to congregate and develop. Folks, that's what the Settlement School is about, and, and I really appreciate, once again, your dedication to the Settlement School uh, and for the ability that it's still here, uh, and I have the opportunity to leave a lasting legacy right here in the mountains. Folks, stay safe. Thank you all for all you do.